Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Uh, these are our newsletters, and you can find out about them at our website if you don't know about us. Um, we have the currency currents, as Steve said, and we talk about a lot of this stuff. Um, and um, these are other and other letters uh, for various traders using ETFs or position trading and spot FX and futures, a very short-term trading service. And we also started a global macro service where we're looking at all the different asset classes and investment opportunities using futures uh, and ETFs. So feel free to contact us, and we're happy to you know, share any information on that. That's all I have, Steve. I think uh, that was plenty. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, just want to remind everyone, I would highly recommend that you sign up for Jack's free Currency Currents newsletter that he and his son write each day. Uh, it has a tremendous amount of information in each day, uh, of course, each day. And they also have pay services. And Jack, could you talk more about your newest newsletter? Sure. It's called the Global Macro Trader. And we do a lot of this research, as you can see, uh, in, in and have for a long time. Um, so we decided to just apply that to some of these other asset classes that we look at on a regular basis. We use a lot of these asset classes. We look at bonds. We look at stock indices. We look at oil and we look at gold um, as <clears throat> major asset classes compared on an intermarket basis against all the currencies. Um, so given that, we've decided to also give some ideas, some trading ideas on these other asset classes. Um, we've, I've traded those in the past myself, um, a, lot of, a lot of these different asset classes on the future side of the fence. Um, and we're just expanding a bit in terms of our offering, even though you know, it's research that we've done uh, for many years. So hopefully that will be something that people like if we help them make some money in those areas. I would guess so. That's great. Uh, and uh, the cost, is it different for the different newsletters, Jack? Yes, the uh, currency investor is just an ETF trader uh, of currencies, long-term hold based on these global macro themes, and that's $39 a year. Uh, we think it's a, it comes out once a month. Uh, position trader is $99 a month. Swing trader, $99 a month. And global macro trader is also will be $99 a month. We have a special now running for $69 a month, um, but um, you know through the next day or so. Uh, but they're all go to 99 the, the more... Uh, intensive trading services. So you could just sign up for a month, and if you don't like it, that's uh, 69 or $99, not a big investment, huh, Jack? That's right. And, you know, that's that's exactly right. I mean, our, our job is to try and help you make money, and if we don't do that, uh, there's no reason to stay. <laughs> well, Probably. that's great. Um, and, again, you know, please go to Currency Current, or uh, sign up for Currency Current. Black Swan Trading, you can send Jack an, e an email, I think, at info at blackswantrading.com. Uh, and let's just ha take some questions. Um, let's see. I saw a couple really interesting ones uh, coming through. One had to do, Danny had a question about, so if the if, if ch uh, Chinese currency moves up, let's say 10 or 20 percent, isn't that going to create uh, inflation for us? For the rest of the world, I mean, U.S. citizens and everybody else, if their currency is stronger, um, at least that's uh, a possibility, isn't it, Jack? Uh, I don't think it's not that simple. Um, you know, there, it assumes that there won't be any replacement goods. It assumes that the demand will always stay the same for that product that's right. going up. Um, it assumes money supply. Uh, I think that I don't think you can make that. That but that it's argument. Too simplistic. I, I yeah, gotcha. yeah. I mean, there's no doubt it it it, it would create. Often, when you, you hear the you hear that when a particular commodity price goes up or a needed commodity goes up, it's going to create inflation. But it's not necessarily the case. You you maybe may buy less of something else um, in order to get you know you know product X. So therefore, on a relative basis, the spending hasn't changed. You've just you've just substituted. Um, you know, something or cut out something. So it's not quite that simple. 
Jerome, good point. That is a good point. Uh, John has a question about when you were talking about the surplus nations. I forget which slide it was, but you used uh, the acronym CA, and I just couldn't remember what that was. Uh, what is that acronym CA? Current account. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Current account. All right, John. Um, let's see what else that we see. Uh, Carl has a question. He says, when you say 1.5 credit for a dollar of GDP, is that China borrowing 1.5, and how are they? How are they uh, borrowing? It? Yeah, let me let me try and explain that. And it, it just means that when, whenever you are starting from a, a low a low base, whether it's China or any economy, and you start to put um, money in to create value on the other end. Um, when you're starting at a low base, the money that you put in has a very stimulative effect. It's very efficiently used. But when you start to get more and more money in and you, you have overcapacity and it's harder to create value, it takes more relative money to create the same amount of value than it did when you started from a very low base. And that's what he's saying. And it, and it happens in all economies. Um, as you know, as as lending or credit builds, sooner or later the system is saturating, and there's there aren't that many values out there. So it takes more and more dollars to create the same amount of value than it did early on. Hopefully that makes makes some sense. And that's a process in every economy. It's not just China, but it the those stats show that China needs more and more credit flowing in whether it's from the government or hot money, to create the same relative value and growth. And that's why um, they say that markets are asymmetrical, meaning mm -hmm. they fall so much faster than they go up, precisely because of that process, you know, that process at the margin. When the credit isn't there and you take a, you know, when the growth opportunities aren't there and the credit is less and less efficient, and then you start to clamp down on credit, it, it creates a it creates a very fast bust situation because the valuations then are exposed for what they are, and then you have a lack of credit at the same time. So you not only have a sentiment effect, you have a real credit effect, decline effect at the margin, and it creates that bust, which happens so much faster than the boom. And that's a natural process in all economies. So Jack, uh, going coming back to the United States, if you think about the, the internet crash, I guess, if you will. We were overbuilding a lot of different things in 1998, 1999, 2000. Um, when uh, the Fed decided to uh, lower rates to uh, stabilize things, that would be uh, an example of that, how the first couple of, uh, I guess, easing initially was good, but uh, it turned out to be a couple of years later, some of the money that was being used was uh, done for real estate uh, investments or speculation that wasn't so good. Sure, it's it's the standard you know credit induced boom bust problem that's been with us <clears throat> forever that we an lesson that we never seem to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, but the problem is politically it's hard, right? Uh, even if the Fed chairman could say, you know what, it's time to to end the party, um, uh, politicians don't want to see rates going up when everything's going well, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.